February 19th. Army camp near vos couleurs. This morning I awoke to visions of fire and steel. These nightmares come more often, now that I've seen my beloved France eaten away by years of war. I wandered through camp, ignoring the new snowfall, but observing the wounds and weariness of every soldier under my command. Observing the desperation in their eyes. It was then that I first saw the girl. She told us that her name was Joan. She told us she was but a peasant who did not know how to ride or fight. She told us that she intended to rescue France. The darkness lifted from the men's souls. Her voice rang with conviction, and we drank in her every word. I may have lost my faith, but Joan has not lost hers, and that is enough for me. Joan has asked our ragged band of soldiers to take her to Chinon, where the rightful ruler of France, the Dauphin, hides from his foes. The war-torn land in between is infested with enemy marauders, and we will lose many men. Death is by now an old companion, but for Joan, we will face it again. Bonjour, Joan. My colleague and I will escort you to the Chateau of the Dauphin, or else we will die trying. I am Jean de Metz, and I will protect you with my life. Okay, Lipe. Set. You are Joan of Arc. I have heard your claims and Perfect. believe what you say. Oh, yeah. We will follow you to Chinon. Set. Lipe. Wait! You might have need of a few archers on the road ahead. Prêt. Certes. Oh yeah. You must be wary on the road ahead. Our enemies, the English, are out in force, and their Burgundian allies are thick as rats. Discretion is the better part of valor. Certes. Oh yeah. Libé. Da. Oh yeah. Certes. Libé. Certes. Look out! A battle rages Libé. ahead! Stay back, lest we be caught in the crossfire! Another glorious loss for France. I hope you really can turn the tide of this war, Joan of Arc. Oh yeah. Certes. Libé. Libé. Oh yeah. Certes. Libé. Oh yeah. Gather your belongings, Libé. men. We follow que Joan of Arc. Certes. We will carry that tram oh along yeah. with Libé. us. It may yet be of use. Que ya? Oh yeah. Que fait? Libé. Que ya? Certes. Que fait? Certes. Libé. Bonjour. Certes. We need a manganel or ram to get through these walls. Libé. Oil, pirate, oil. Soldiers everywhere! Hurry west to the river where we can make our escape! You mean to lead the French army? 
Such confidants I have not seen since this war began. Very well. You have six more soldiers. Jean the Met. Shinon, we have made it. The Chateau of the Dauphin. The Dauphin will see you now. As Joan's footsteps echoed down the marbled hall of the chateau, the fat and whispering dukes did naught but stare. The Dauphin himself seemed afraid as she kissed his feet. My gentle Dauphin, she demanded. Why does England claim what is ours? Why are you not crowned King of France, as is your right? The courtiers began to murmur. The Chamberlain whispered lies into the Dauphin's ear. But the Dauphin pushed the Chamberlain away and rose to meet Joan's gaze. She stands only to the shoulder of the shortest man. But all of us must look up to speak to her. I know not what silent conversation passed between the Dauphin and his would-be savior. But it was obvious that his majesty was in the same thrall as we. March 26th, Chinon. It is one thing for a band of dispirited soldiers to put their trust in a teenage girl. It is entirely another for that girl to be given command of the army of an entire nation. We were filled with pride when we heard the Dauphin's heralds pronounce Joan the Maid as commander of the army of France. So that she may look like a general, the Dauphin presented Joan with a great war horse and a suit of white armor. Joan instructed me to look for an ancient sword buried beneath the altar of a local church. I was skeptical. But not only did the man unearth a rusted blade, but we found that the sword had belonged to Charlemagne, grandfather of France. I shall not doubt her word again. Still visible on the hilt was the fleur de lis. Joan adopted the fleur de lis as her symbol and had it blazoned upon her battle standard. Wherever Joan goes, the standard goes also goes with us to Orléans. The city of Orléans is one of the finest in France, but it is under siege by our enemies. England and Burgundy is about to fall. This war has dragged on for 100 years, with precious few French victories. The people of Orléans need a savior. They will receive Joan of Arc. I am the Duke. Belonson, milady. I will proudly ride with you to Orléans. Our city needs help. The English are coming. Welcome to Blois, Jean of Arc. The army of France is yours. Now, on to Orléans. Oh, yeah. We need Fair. to get some supplies past the English.
Jean the maid has come. We are saved. Café. Café. Oh yeah. Libé. Oh yeah. Certo. Libé. Certo. We are generous people. We will allow you to stay in all ways. But France belongs to England now. Never forget that. Joan prophesied that she would be wounded at Orléans. In the height of the battle, an arbalest bolt knocked her from her horse. We could not believe our misfortune. But as we carried Joan away from the carnage, the battle was won. Orléans was free. When we entered the city, the entire population cheered us on from windows, rooftops, and city streets. They fired artillery into the night sky and shouted aloud their nickname for Joan. La Pucelle! The Maid of Orléans. June 14th, Orléans. Our rescue of Orléans was a setback for our enemies, but only a minor one. The English still possess half of France. Tragically, we have cooled our heels for weeks, while the Dauphin's advisors debate. Joan became irritated with the delay and reassembled her army. She talks of nothing but her mission to drive the English into the sea. The force of Joan's will is titanic. She has gathered to her banner swearing brigands and knaves and turned them into patriots and heroes. Among them is the man Lair, a giant clad in plate mail. He drives men on with curses and fists. There will be plenty of English necks for Lair to break and pate. 
Pate is the gateway to the Loire River Valley. The English hold the Loire in a grip of steel, whilst a huge army and the surgeon Fastoff devastate the countryside. Joan leads us to Pate to capture the English castles. However, we must avoid Fastoff's army until we are strong enough to face his veterans. Yeah, leave it. Que fait? Oh yeah. yeah La Hill wishes to kill something. Oui, oil. Hey, sir. Que yeah? You see ships, we can cross the Loire River and deal with any English warships we encounter. Almost dry. Hey. Oh, yeah. You're attacking our castles. Enough of this! I shall deal with Joan of Arc. Oh yeah, Seth. As all. I come for you, Joan of Arc. 
Do your wells to English fop. À la bataille. Rivet, certes. Rivet, oyel. Que fait, certes. Oyel. Rivet. Oh, yeah. We are but one more to raise. Then English can't oh, make yeah. a castle stronger than Le oh, yeah. Certes. Oh, yeah. Que fait? À la bataille. for England! Libé, certes. Oh yeah. Certes. Oh yeah. Libé. Assault. to surrender the Wild Valley back to the French. Another victoire for Joan of Arc. After Pate, the myth of English invulnerability was dispelled. Now, our army knows it is possible to win, but only if we are resolute and cunning. The English are a most deadly enemy, and their humble men have decimated the charge of French knights time and time again. To make matters worse, we now face enemies on both sides. The Dolphins' advisor spend more and more time wrangling, jealous of Joan's influence in court. I pray that Joan can complete her divine mission before the Dolphins' envious advisors betray her. June 25th, Orléans. Dead France is returning to life. Our army swells with new recruits. In olden times, men swore fealty only to their particular lord. Now, we fight not for the insolent lords and ladies, but for France. For all of us, Joan is France. 
There is no distinction in our minds. The Dauphin himself has arrived in Orléans. Never have I seen such a celebration. France needs a king, so we must escort the Dauphin to Reims, where he can be properly crowned. Yet, the city of Reims is dangerously menaced by the Anglo-Burgundian army. The cities of Troyes and Chalon also bar the way. Job commands that we must liberate all three cities before the coronation, and we eagerly seek to fight. Que fait Prêt, certes. Que fait Livet To arms The French are trying Oye. to cross the river Oyez oh, yeah. Certes. Prêt, Oyez oh, yeah. Livet Da Je 
perfect. Rems has been liberated. Now the coronation of the Dauphin can proceed. As we rode into Reims, a sea of peasants and lords knelt before Joan. Some even knelt to kiss her horses' hoofprints. Cannon thundered, and a thousand flags danced in the breeze. In the enormous palace, the Dauphin knelt before the Archbishop and rose as King of France. Prayers, anthems, and sermons filled the great chateau. Interspersed among perfumed dukes and ladies were tattered soldiers from our army, many still bearing wounds. Joan herself was at the king's side, as was her bedraggled battle standard. Despite the celebration, I know in my heart that this war is far from over. Our fathers and grandfathers died fighting the English. Joan gives us hope, but I do not know if hope is enough to ensure victory. September 3rd, France. France has a king once more. However, as Joan gains influence with the people, jealousy grows within the court. The king's evil advisors now seek to destroy Joan. It is only a matter of time before they succeed in poisoning the king's mind. Joan must hurry to fulfill her mission. Paris, the jewel of France, has been under English tyranny for decades, and French patriots trapped within the city are eager to escape. We are now marching on Paris, hoping that the reinforcements we have been promised will arrive in time. Paris is just ahead. Let us locate the refugees and escort them to the rendezvous point with the king's men.
have rescued the refugees. Now, we should head to the bridge at the Seine River Prêt, for the rendezvous with the King's men. Oil. We should wait here. The King's reinforcements will be along any second. Where are those blasted reinforcements? We are all the king could afford to send. Fred, Fred, oh yeah. The king's Libé. wicked advisors want to see John be fame. Or worse, we are on our own. We must hurry Fred. Oh yeah. to Compiègne. We are tired of licking English boots. We follow where you lead, Jean of Arc. You are victorious, and our peasants are safe. I just hope John can make it to the castle. Tragedy. As the refugees fled into the chateau of Compiègne, Joan was trapped outside. Dropankian soldiers knocked her from her horse and paraded around with their prisoner. None of us can sleep knowing our precious Joan of Arc languishes in a Burgundian prison. The soldiers stare at the uncaring sky, condemning themselves for being unable to save her, for being unable to save France. Paris was the first major defeat ever dealt to our army. Had the king sent the promised reinforcements, we would have captured the city. Now it is France's darkest hour. July 14th, Bordeaux, no Joan of Arc. A rich world made empty and poor. The English put her on trial as a heretic. Joan's mind was as sharp as her sword and she avoided all the cunning verbal traps of her prosecutors. In the end, Joan would not renounce her mission. The English found her guilty and burned her at the stake. But her death is not in vain. La Pucelle is the rallying cry as peasant and nobleman alike take arms. My army is an army of the people. An 
And even without the king, we are poised to strike at the English stronghold of Castillon. A victory at Castillon will crush the English pretensions in France forever. Should I die in this battle, I die for the Maid of Orléans. I die as a patriot of France. I shall avenge thee. Lord Jocelyn, the army awaits your command. Mi bet. Oyev. Mi bet. Sert. Oyev. Mi bet. Sert. Oyev. Mi bet. We fight for the maid of Orléans! Uh, La Hill sword is not bloody enough. We'll see how English longbows fare against French cannon. Yes, sir. Perhaps we should defeat the Burgundians and establish our base in their own town. Just as all. the Burgundian yeah, oh yeah. stockpile of resources. Oh 
mondiale. Rivet, à la bataille. Victories was reversed in a little over a year by a teenage girl. A hundred years ago, as it had been. Even more importantly, Joan's acts ignited a sense of French nationalism. Peasants and nobles alike no longer belong to lords and kings, but to France herself. We will not let Joan be forgotten. Already, statues and stained glass portraits have been commissioned in hundreds of towns and cities throughout France. The verdict of guilt was rightfully reversed, and I expect that Joan of Arc will soon be beatified as a saint. Sometimes the outcome of history is determined by strength of arms, other times by happenstance. But in 15th century France, History was determined by the will of a young girl. The only person in history to command the armies of an entire nation at the age of 17. 